In this video, let's understand how to construct this dynamic top and chart that shows eight products right now. But if I slide it, it's going to show me more products. To make this dynamic top and chart, we are going to use the parameter feature of Power BI. Let me first quickly explain what this is in a blank workbook. If you go to the new parameter, you'll have an option to use either numeric range or field parameters. I have explained field parameters in a different video on my channel. But the numeric range, when you insert it, it will give you a choice to add a numeric variable to your Power BI workbook. Let's call this as top products and let's set this to one and we have 22 products. So maximum will be 22. Increment can be one. And by default, I want to see top 10. When you create this, you're going to get a slider added to your workbook as well as a top products table. This table is just a listing of numbers 1 through 22 and this slider can be used to select one of those values. There's also going to be a measure added. This is called top products value. It just tells you what is the value of the slider that is selected. We can use this in conjunction with your data model to set up a top n dynamic chart like this. Let me explain some of the workings of this in a blank page here. First up, I'm going to add a table. And in this table, I'm going to bring my product name and total sales. This is the measure against which I want to see the top 10 items or top 8 items. Let's also add that numeric slider. For this, you can use the slicer visual and use the top products field value for that. Now that we know how many products we want to see and the sales values for all the products, we just need to figure out whether to show a product or hide a product. I call this kind of a thing as display status. We can calculate that using a measure. In fact, I have already calculated that in this measure here, display status for products. But let's write this from scratch again. In this measure, we'll create a variable top n products and use the top n function to calculate all the top n products. The top n function takes n value, which is given by this slider here. So that is the top products value measure. And then the table, the table will be my products table, product column. Now we do need all the products, not a single product. So we're going to send this to all function. Then we want to order this by an expression. The expression is my total sales and we want this in the descending order. The result of this top n is going to be a table that contains all our top n products. Right now n is 11. We'll also calculate another variable to hold the current product in the context of evaluation. So for the first row, that's going to be 50% dark bytes. And this can be selected underscore product is selected value of my product table product column. Now that both of these are there, we just need to see if this is present in that table. So return if selected product in top n products, then one else zero. This one or zero tells me whether to show a product or hide the product. When you add this measure to the table, you're going to get a lot of zeros and 11 ones. Let's sort this table on total sales so we can actually see all the ones up top. Here we go. Let's test this. If I go all the way to one, there should be only one product to be displayed. And if I go all the way to 22, then I should have 22 ones here. So far, so good. Now, we don't want to see this number here. We want to dynamically filter our table based on that number. So I'll select my table, go to the filters and where it says display status is all, expand this filter down and change the filter to ease and just type one as filter. When you apply this filter, we now have a dynamic filter set up on the table that's going to show me only the rows that have display status as one. Let's test this out. If I slide this to 14, I'll have just 14 rows in the table, four, just four rows and 15, 15 rows. Now that we get what we want, just convert this into a chart. Before we do that, let's take out the display status field altogether from this table. That's going to still keep the filter on. It's just that it won't be shown in the visual and turn this into a bar chart. And there is your dynamic top end chart. If I slide this down, 
I'll have seven bars. And if I go to 19, I'll have 19 bars. You can take that idea and combine that with few more measures to figure out the narrative for your visual. For example, here I'm saying top 13 products bring in 67% of all our sales. And I'm also showing the dollar amounts underneath so that we can understand. Do you have a passion for creating killer dashboards? Well, I got some exciting news for you. I'm thrilled to announce my first ever Power BI dashboard contest happening this month. And guess what? You're invited to join in on the fun. Here is how it works. Simply hop onto Microsoft Teams and join my exclusive awesome dashboard community using your personal email address or phone number. Refer to the video description below for a link to join the community or scan the QR code that is shown on the screen. The price? $500 worth of Amazon gift cards could be yours. So what are you waiting for? Join my community, download the awesome chocolates data set and whip up your very own Power BI dashboard. Other than the contest, use the community to directly interact with me. I'll help answer questions and share advice. All the details about the contest and the deadlines is waiting for you inside the community. So this is your chance to flex those Power BI muscles and win some cool prices along the way. Ready to dive in? Download the app, sign in using your personal email address, join my community, follow the contest rules to unroll and start interacting.